First um, Thessalonians chapter 5, 12 and 13, and then Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17. And uh, Paul wrote the first. We don't know who wrote the second. Uh, we know that God is the ultimate author, and this is what he had written as his word through Paul and the writer to the Hebrews. First Thessalonians chapter 5. We ask you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And then Hebrews 13, verse 17. Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. So those are the words of God for his church then and today <clears throat> for your edification and mine. In September, in light of the fact that we elected, we're having the election of Steve and, and Robert, I began a, a, a short series at that point on shepherding God's flock, talking about elders and and the shepherding response was given to them. Um, in the first sermon, I uh, spoke on the qualifications that the Bible provides for us in Timothy and in Titus. They are qualities that are to mark the life, the character, and the life of an elder. They're not qualities that make him into some kind of superhuman, you know, defied depravity or anything like that. That's not true. There's only one man like that that walked the earth, and that was Jesus. Are, um, you know, are, are flawed and have, make mistakes. But nevertheless, the, the character qualities that are, are found in the, in the qualifications ought to mark their life and their character. And, and it's something that they're always growing into as well. And then, the, and then the second sermon that I preached, I focus on the truth that the covenant community, you all, really have God as your ultimate shepherd. Now, he watches over his flock. And you see that in the Old and in the New Testament. God is the, the ultimate shepherd of his people, of his church, of his family. And he has provided in a very big way. How has he, how has he provided for you? Well, he's provided eternal life. He, he saw fit to send his son into the world to do all the work that was necessary so that you could be rescued from perishing, so that you could be awakened and, uh, and, and become you know, a child of God by faith in Jesus Christ. That's a big time care that God has given. And he's also provided for your ongoing spiritual nourishment once you come into the fold through his word and spirit, through his church. Um, there's a destination where we're all headed as Christians, and that's the new creation, the new heavens and the new earth, uh, where righteousness will be at home. Uh, sin will be a thing of the past. Sorrow will be a thing of the past. Um, and, and between now and then, God has provided all that you and I need through his word and spirit, in the context of his church so that we can stay on that righteous path all the way to glory. And then the third sermon that I spoke in this series has to do with the under shepherds that, that God has seen fit to give his church um, as a whole. Uh, the church is his organization and he is seen fit to provide human leadership uh, to care for the people of God. And of course you got elders and you got deacons and deacons have the mercies and the physical side of the care that is administered, very vital. The shepherds are given the responsibility and the authority to provide spiritual oversight and care. 
and every elder, including me as a teaching elder, serve under the chief shepherd, Jesus Christ. And we are absolutely mandated to follow his leadership, which is outlined in his word. Um, and as we minister that word, we are ministering it in order to care for you spiritually. Now today, um, it's the end of the series. I've talked about the elders side of things and God's shepherding care, but I gotta talk about the other side of the equation and that's you. And how, what your response is and is to be by God's grace to the shepherding care that is given to you. <clears throat> and there are two basic responses that I'm gonna talk about today from the passages that I read. Um, I hope you don't throw tomatoes at me this morning or get up and stomp off because you disagree with me. Um, I realize how feeble I am, uh, how frail I am, how prone to make mistakes that I and the elders are. Um, I say that as a sort of a qualifier or caveat, but I'm not the standard and the elders aren't the standard, the Bible is. And God calls us as elders to a high standard and he calls his church and his people to a high standard. And, um, and so I want to talk about that today and talk about two basic responses. This is not exhaustive, it's basic, but it's fundamental and important. You have to have the, the right attitudes as sheep, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ toward your leadership and the right actions. So if you like, you know, all A's or all P's, whatever, two A's. Your attitudes, your actions. God's concerned about both when it comes to your relationship to the elders in the church. So we begin with the, uh, the right attitudes. God wants you to have the right attitudes toward your shepherd leaders. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12, God says through Paul's writings, you're to recognize them. The ESV, which is what I read from today, says you are to respect them. Um, probably better to translate the word recognize or acknowledge here, in part because Paul goes on to call for something similar to respect in verse 13. And this word um, also has the sense of acknowledge or recognize in 1 Corinthians 16, 18. So God wants you to recognize or acknowledge your elders. What about them? What about the elders are you to acknowledge or to recognize? Well, their office, for one thing, uh, they didn't create the office, right? It's, it's an office that you can trace all throughout the Bible from the, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. God has, has, has had elders overseeing his people in some form or another. So you're acknowledging their office and then what comes with the office. The authority and the responsibility that God has given to them for your care. So you're recognizing, you're acknowledging the office and then the authority and the responsibility that comes with that office. And if I were to put it in my own words, what I would be thinking is this. You may think about it a little differently, but as I understand what Paul is saying here, he's saying something like this. God has provided for my care through these human shepherd leaders. I need them. Without their care, I run the risk of straying away from God. That's why God installs them and, and has uh, come about establishing the elders as shepherds because he knows the proneness of the heart of, of sinners like you and me. What does Isaiah said? We're prone to wander. We're pro sheep tend to stray away. 
And so God has provided the elders to help with that. And so acknowledge the men that God has called and put in place here at Redeemer. We just ordained and installed two guys today. God wants you to acknowledge them, to recognize them for the role and responsibility that they have as elders now. As I said earlier, we're flawed, okay? I'm flawed. And every other elder that I serve along with, gentlemen, we're flawed. We don't always think in the right way. We don't always talk in the right way. Sometimes we can get out of hand in, in our discussions of things over the years. I've lived it. I know it. Um, but even though we're flawed, and we've got to recognize that in humility, we are still, we still have been given the authority by God to oversee your spiritual lives, and your walk with God. And God says, I want you to acknowledge that congregation in your heart and mind. Now, Paul doesn't stop there with just acknowledging, saying, oh yeah, Bill, he's our pastor, yeah, and he has this role and responsibility, and I understand that, and, and the other elders too, I get it. But notice what he says elsewhere, uh, further in verse 13 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. He says, esteem them highly in love. Paul takes it, Paul takes the verb consider and he combines it with an adverb that can be translated super abundantly. Are you kidding? Is that really what Paul is saying? Esteem them super abundantly in love. Paul has gone crazy. How could he say that? How could God tell him to write that, move him along by the Spirit to say, esteem highly those who have been given spiritual authority to care for you. They're flawed. How can we esteem them highly? They're no better than we are. Well, they are no better. I'm no better than you are, for sure. Um, he says to do it in love. And what that means, I think, is that it's healthy and good to have that kind of attitude toward your elders. It's a gift of love to them. To know that by the grace of God, you've come to a place respecting God ultimately and, and, and having the appropriate esteem for those who have been given the charge to care for you. Um, the main reason why Paul is saying what he's saying, as far as I can understand, it's not because of the office. You know, like, you know, we're wearing a uniform and you got to salute us or anything. It's not that. It's because of the work that they are called to do, and set aside to do. The work of shepherding you in the midst of a sinful and dark world. Um, it is a mean world out there. It is a dark world, a sinful world. And, and not only is it out there, but it, it's right in here with all of us. And the shepherd of God's flock, the shepherds of God's flock in a local church are called by God to step into that and shepherd God's people in the midst of the mud and muck of, of this world and try to shepherd God's people so that they stay on the right path, the path of righteousness, so that they are able to please and honor God with their lives here and make it to the very end when they meet Jesus Christ, the, the chief shepherd of the flock. So it's because of their work. Now in Hebrews, the writer of the Hebrews turns up the notch a little bit, okay? Um, not only recognize and esteem highly because of their work, but he said, Paul, the writer to Hebrews says, <clears throat> you ready for this? Are you ready? Submit to them! That's sort of anti-American, isn't it? What do you mean, submit? I'm in charge of my own life. Get away! 
Well, there, there are some qualifiers here, okay? But once again, I don't have the freedom to water down the Word of God, you know, because I, I might be afraid to say, you've got to be willing to obey your leaders. But that's what God says. I've got to trust Him. And so out of that trust, I say it to you this morning. And what that means, another way of understanding what submission means, it, it means give way in your spirit to their authority, their God-given spiritual authority. Your heart attitude is to be inclined to trust, to have confidence in, to be willing to place yourself under their leadership as they lead you in keeping with the Bible. And that's key. Bill Slattery, Frank Seston, Dave Kitts, and the two kid, new, new guys on the block, Dave and, and uh, I mean, Robert and Steve. We don't have any right to lead you in any other way than, than what the Bible says. If we step out of line and come up with our, our own opinion, um, some weird ideas and things like that, you don't pay us any mind. You go, you guys have lost it. You say it with respect and all. Um, you know, if, if we go astray, there's a way to deal with that. Um, I'm accountable to the Presbytery, and if I go astray, then, you know, the elders need to deal with me, and then this, the Presbytery would deal with me and make sure I, you know, right the ship and repent and, and, and do right. Um, so the elders who shepherd God's flock here need to follow the Bible. That means they need to know it and then and base our decisions as much as we can on our understanding of what the Bible teaches. There are some times, there are some times where judgments need to be made. It's not crystal clear in scripture as to which way to go. And uh, my father and all used to tell me, Bill, you know, the eldership oftentimes, many times, is, is, a, is a place where judgment calls need to be made by wise men who seek God. And, uh, and that is true. I've experienced that as well. Sometimes it's clear. Other times, we've got to put our heads together and prayerfully think, you know, what is the wisest course of action in this situation? So, God calls you, first of all, Christians and sheep in God's fold here at Redeemer, to have the right attitudes. Trust God and, and submit to him and submit to his word with the right attitudes. And then he wants you to have or perform the right actions. And there are two that are mentioned in Hebrews 13, 17. Um, if submit wasn't hard enough, this particular one is maybe even harder. God is calling you to obey your shepherd leaders as they obey the chief shepherd who leads us and guides us by his word and spirit. Obey your leaders. So the, high, the regard, the high esteem, the submissive spirit must lead to outward compliance and obedience. Now let me qualify that. Okay, um, it's not blind obedience where whatever an elder says, even though it's wrong or sinful, must, you must obey. No. You remember when, when uh, um, in Acts chapter 5, 4 and 5, I believe, when, when the, uh, some of the disciples were hauled before um, the officials and... Uh, and the long and short of it, they didn't compromise. They said, uh, you know, don't, don't preach that word anymore. And they said, basically, we've got to obey God rather than man. And that principle holds true in marriage, and it holds true, you know, in the, in the relationship between an elder and the people. Um, the elders, as I've already said, have to lead you by the word. And when they go you know, away from that, you're obligated to continue following the word and following Jesus. So it's not a blind obedience. It's following the elders as they lead you according to the word of God. 
And it's not a servile obedience where you are the slave of the elders. If you have that in your mind, get rid of it. We don't believe that. That's not what God's calling us to. You're not the slaves of the elders. And uh, they're not here to boss you around and whip you into shape. What did Peter say when we looked at that passage in 1 Peter? It says, as elders, don't lord it over the people. And that's a threat. I mean, he, Paul, Peter wouldn't say that if that wasn't a problem in the church then and a potential problem down the road all these many years later. It's, it's always a potential problem with elders who are given charge and given authority. And if they're not careful, it can go to their head. And they, you know, and maybe well-meaning many times, I think. Um, that's why we need checks and balances in, in, in the session. Uh, because you can, you, can, you can, through even interpretation of scripture, you can get yourself such in a position where you, you think it's, you, it's your way or the highway. And you come down hard and in a rough way, rather than trusting God to change the heart and ministering the word firmly, but with love and gentleness. So, you know, the elders are to, are to, to lead you according to the Bible and you're to follow their lead as they teach you the word of God accurately by precept and example. So, here I am today. I'm standing before you and I'm preaching a sermon talking about your responsibility as a congregation to respond to your elders by recognizing them and the authority that, that God has given to them to care for you, uh, to be willing to submit and obey their leadership as they lead you in the ways of God. So I'm teaching that right now. And I think it's clear as day in the Bible. I'm not, there's no gray area here as far as the fundamentals. Um, and so, when, when, you're, when you hear a sermon preached by me, and I'm preaching on this or something else, and, and, and God speaks to you through the accurate interpretation and application of the word of God, what are you to do? When I say, go and forgive that person, what are you to do? Now, you're to obey. You're primarily obeying God, but I'm his instrument. The elders are instruments of his to instruct you to, hey man, yeah, you, you haven't talked to that person in five years. You've got to go make it right. We'll go with you if you want. We'll certainly pray for you. What God is saying is that when we shepherd you in that way through a sermon, through counseling or whatever, and it's crystal clear, there's no doubt about what you want to do, then God is wanting you to obey follow their lead, follow Christ, and go and make, that, make it right with that individual, and so on. There's one other action mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5.13. It says, be at peace with them. Um, there's nothing uglier, in my opinion, than an eldership being at odds with the congregation and the congregation being at odds with the elders, there being a conflict. Uh, that should not be in the Church of Jesus Christ. It happens. Um, but the elders and, and the people need to be committed to being peacemakers. The elders must guard against abusing their authority and thereby providing the occasion for conflict in the church. We can be guilty of that. We, we got to not do that. There's got to be an abundance of humility and meekness and love and gentleness. Firm, yes, firmness, yes, but delivered uh, by love and, 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 and gentleness and meekness, trusting that God will do the work, not by the power of personality, by a humble obedience of elders to the word of God. So the elders must guard against abusing their authority and providing the occasion for conflict. On the other hand, the people of the congregation must not disregard the elders' authority and do and say things that promote trouble and conflict in the church. So we've got to watch it from both ends. And 
in the future, if there is, you know, a problem that develops, you know, in the congregation, I hope you remember this sermon and, and realize, you know, this, this church, it doesn't belong to me, doesn't belong to you. It's the church of Jesus Christ. And what did he do for this church to be able to exist? He spilt his valuable blood so that you could be cleansed of your sin, filled with the spirit and united to him by faith and united to his body. And the scripture is replete with the call to the church to pursue peace, to be peacemakers, not at any cost, not at, not at the, the cost of compromising doctrine, no. But short of that, we need to work really, really hard to be peacemakers. Paul says, work hard to maintain the unity of the spirit. Peace is important. And so I, I, I end with giving you three reasons as to why you need to have these right attitudes and right actions toward the human shepherd leaders of the church. One, because of the nature of the work given to them, Hebrews 13, 17. Paul says there, or the writer there says, they keep watch over your souls. That's what an elder does. They keep watch over your souls. And pay attention. We're, guys, we got to pay attention. I think at times we get fallen asleep and we need to stay alert and watch over the flock. And as we watch over the flock, we are seeking to protect and to guide God's flock from spiritual and moral danger, from going astray. We're, to, we're there to feed God's flock, the word of God, so the individual, the, the sheep are nourished and strengthened in their faith. So that's the first reason, because of the nature of the work. Also, because they have to give an account to God. Um, now, this idea of being, account uh, being, given, uh, being accountable is something that's true, not just of the elder, but, but all of us. Um, every believer will have to give an account before God on the final day. Um, now you are saved by grace and there will be no condemnation for the believer. Christ has borne all our sin. He was condemned in our place. So that's out of the picture on the final day. But God still will judge your works and what you did with your time and talent to determine the degree of your reward. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 10 says, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 12, 14 says, each of us will give an account of himself to God. And what will happen according to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 12 and 15? If anyone builds on this foundation using gold, silver, costly stones, wood, hay, or straw, their work will be shown for what it is, because the day, the day of judgment, will bring it to light. It will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test the quality of each person's work. If what has been built survives, the builder will receive a reward. If it is burned up, the builder will suffer loss, but yet will be saved, even though as only one escaping through the flames. Some are gonna slide in, and all because of the work of Christ and his grace. But God is concerned about our lives and what we do with all that he's blessed us with. He wants us to use our gifts and abilities for the building up of the body of Christ, for the furtherance of the kingdom of God. Now Paul, the scriptures ramp it up for the, for the teacher and the elder. James 3.1 says that elders and teachers will receive a stricter judgment. Don't know, all, don't know all that that will entail, but it's just what it says. And he, Paul, James goes on to say, so not many of you should become teachers. Um, so according to God in these passages, that ought to be motivation for, for you as sheep in God's fold to follow the leadership of your elders. And there's one additional reason, because life will be better for them and for you. 
When you relate to elders with the right attitude and action, it brings them joy. And it really does. Um, there's not, that's one of the things that brings great joy to my heart, and I, I assume the elders too, when, when you know God's people are following the Lord, when you, when you hear of good reports. Like I said yesterday, seeing all the service going on, that was, that was great, I was happy, that was good. But, and God's so straightforward, isn't he? He says, when you don't, when you, when you go you know, AWOL and you, and you do things you shouldn't, contrary to the will of God, we groan. You cause them grief. They groan because they understand as elders that they've been given charge over you to care for you, to shepherd you, to help you stay following Christ. And when you're off this way or off that way, you know, there's a, there's a groan. Ah, oh. oh. That happens. It's reality. Um, the writer of the Hebrews says, that will be unprofitable for you now and in the future. It will hinder your growth in Christ and negative effects on others. And as I've already said, you will have to give an account to God. So Christian, you, how are you responding to the care given to you from the church, from the leadership of the church? Are you responding with the right attitudes? What are your attitudes right now? Might there need to be an attitude adjustment based upon what the Bible is saying here? If so, go ahead and do it. Ask God to help you. Are you obeying the Lord? in your life right now, are you obeying him? Has there been a message from the word in which God placed his finger on your heart and you have yet to submit to him and do what he's asked you to do? Is there something outstanding? As I said that, it came right to mind. Is there something like that with you? Obey the Lord. Do what he says. He knows what's right. He'll be with you and he'll bless you as you trust him and obey. Shepherd, leaders of Redeemer and sheep of Redeemer's flock, God has given us a sacred trust for his spiritual soul care. It's his care, it's spiritual soul care that he's provided and he's placed in our hands. So elders, shepherd God's flock well. If we need to step up our game, let's do it. And sheep, follow your shepherd's lead for your spiritual good and for the honor of Christ, the good shepherd, the good shepherd who laid down his life so that you might never perish. Be willing to follow his lead as the elders seek to follow his as well. Let's pray. Our Father, in many ways this is a hard sermon for me to preach because I know some of my failure as a pastor and, and just how hard it can be to do certain things as a shepherd along with the men that serve along with me. Father, um, we pray that you would strengthen the eldership as we add these two men to the shepherding team. I pray that we will have a renewed sense of the importance and necessity to shepherd God's flock well, with great humility, great love, committed to the truth, being persevering and patient as we seek to come alongside and <coughs> strengthen your flock to follow you faithfully. And Lord, I pray for Redeemer Church at, in our present state. Father, you know each person and you know their thoughts and their attitudes and where they are in relationship to you and in relationship to the elders who have charge over them. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would help us to build this relationship for your glory and for the good of all of us here. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming, living and dying and rising again as a chief shepherd of the sheep 
so that we might have life and have it more abundantly. It's in your great name that we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. This time, let's stand and sing together.